Welcome to MathCast edition 14, where we'll be using algebraic patterning to factor a difference of squares. Our two types of patterning that we will be looking at will be decomposition, which we developed for trinomials, and just an observation patterning. So let's get started. The decomposition approach, you'll notice with the difference of squares I only have two terms. All of our decomposition was done with three terms or trinomials, so we need to make this binomial into a trinomial without changing its value. To do that, I'm going to introduce 0x. So if I multiply 0 times x, that is 0. So I have not added anything to this particular expression of value. I've simply changed its appearance. By having that 0 there, though, it allows me to use the decomposition approach of finding two numbers that multiply for negative 4 and sum for 0. And in this case, those two numbers are 2 and negative 2. So I can decompose that middle term. That 0x becomes negative 2 and positive 2. That now gives me the four terms I need to be able to do the group factoring. And when I look at the first two terms here, I have a common factor of x. I look at the last two terms here, I have a common factor of negative 2. And then I can notice that there is an x plus 2 common to both of those, which I common factor out. Therefore, x squared minus 4, when it's fully factored, is x plus 2 times x minus 2. And it's interesting to point out that this line here, the adding of 2x, and the introduction of the negative 2x. This is your zero principle at work. And if you look at MathCast 13, example 1, you'll see this physically being illustrated. Second example for decomposition approach, 4x squared minus 25. Again, it's a binomial or only has two terms. So I want to make it into a trinomial without changing its value, so I introduce the 0x term. I can then do my product and sum, so I look for two numbers that multiply for negative 100 and sum for 0. Those two numbers are 10 and negative 10. I decompose the middle term right there. And then I can now group factor so out of the first two terms, I have a common factor of 2x. The second set of terms, I have a common factor of negative 5. Remember that I want what's inside the brackets to be exactly the same, so that on my last line, I can common factor it. So therefore, 4x squared minus 25 is the same as 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. And again, here's your zero principle from the area model in action. The pattern approach, if you've noticed so far, is that our final result, the values inside the brackets, are just the square roots of the terms we initially started with. So in this case, the 4x squared minus 25 from the previous example became 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. Notice they have the same 2x at the beginning of each of the binomials, the same value of 5, the only thing that's different is that the signs have changed. So that's the pattern we're going to try and take advantage of. So let's go through this. 4x squared minus 25. I want to look at that as a squared term minus a squared term, which is the difference between two squares. What I want to try and figure out is what needs to go inside that bracket squared so that when I applied the square, the exponent, it gets me back to 4x squared. So in this case, it's a 2x. What do I have to apply in this second bracket so that when I square the value, it goes back to a 25? In this case, it's a 5. Once I have those pieces, then it's simply a matter of mapping those two pieces to each of the binomials, like such. I'll change colors here. Maybe not. And then here and here. So let's try this next example. 
49x squared minus 121. So let me introduce this line. I need something squared minus something squared. So what could possibly fill those and still be balanced? Well, 7x all squared would give me 49x squared, and 11 squared would give me 121. Those two pieces will be mapped down into my final line. And again, you can see that we can come from here. The 7x is the leading term in both binomials. The 11 is the trailing term. And they just have different signs in each bracket. So why don't you, no, oh, I'll do one more here. I was going to say you should try this one. Maybe pause it now and have a look. This is a more of a, com a complex version, but the patterning approach I just illustrated works really well on this. So if I try and figure out something squared minus something squared, what could possibly go on the inside of those brackets to get me back to the original? Well, 8x cubed all squared would get me back to 64x to the sixth. So even though there was no squared term with a 2 in it, on the opening line, this is still a difference of squares. This is fairly advanced, so don't panic if this is looks a little difficult. It's just the pattern we want to observe, though. So once I have what's inside those brackets, it's simply a matter of mapping them out to the right location. Just like so. And again, notice the signs are different. You could always check this work by doing the distributive property, multiplying it out, seeing what happens. That's a good way to prove your difference of squares is accurate and correct. But we'll leave that for another math cast. So I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any suggestions, questions, or comments, please send an email to childs underscore math at yahoo.com.